Words are so important. You can't build an argument to get the money that you deserve without using words very carefully. My name is Bev Pike. I'm an artist, a polymath actually, specializing in painting, writing, satire, and I've made video as well. I help artists by coaching grant writing, by lecturing, by lobbying, by exhibiting, networking, by supporting and mentoring artists, helping organizations to get grants. For Creative Manitoba, I do grant writing, coaching. I'll edit people's writing. I'll advise them a little bit on where their studio practice might go, but more it's about the use of words and how to present yourself in a strong way to get the money. You won't get the money if you don't know how to write a grant. The other reason grant writing is important is it, it forces you to use words to describe what you're thinking, what you're feeling in the studio. So one way to start is to keep a journal. Don't show anyone, it's just for you. Now the journal doesn't have to be written. If you're not inclined to do that, you can perform it. Turn on your camera or your iPad and just yell it, dance it. You will need words eventually, but if you get a collaborator or an editor to help you draw out the words that make sense to you, this is really good. You have to be very clear. You can't use opinions. You can't use cliches. Why? Because they don't work. Don't use those because their meaning is so cloudy that it won't apply to you. And you don't want the jury to think something you're not even entertaining. The risk when you put an opinion in a grant application is the jury or a juror will disagree. And we all do it, we don't know we do it. So you need an editor to tell you that you've done it. You can hide it without even knowing. You're trying to use words very precisely to build that argument that you deserve help. Never write a rambling autobiographical narrative. Instead, talk about your work. What are you thinking about in the studio? Let's say you've had something dramatic happen in your personal life that's affecting your studio. Leave your personal life out of it. Instead, say, I'm looking at the nature of grief in this work. Something like that will be very interesting for a juror who doesn't know you to read. Also, I show people who come in for grant writing coaching how to edit and the importance of an editor. So you can't edit your own work beyond a certain point. Yeah, you edit it up until you get it to the stage you can't uh, do anymore. Then you have to take it to an editor who is not in your family. The reason why they can't be in your family is they know you too well. You have to find a professional editor. You can barter, you can trade, you can pay them. But get an objective editor who can help you tease out thoughts or concepts that you've been circling around but not having the words for. So that's another way to get really important words for your grant. Also, very important, the very first sentence when you write anything about your work has to say everything. I am a painter who works in large-scale paintings about underground shell grottos and have been since 2012. It all must be in the first sentence. Why? Because people won't remember anything else if they read it. So you have to have a really juicy, fabulous first sentence. Just when you think you've gone as deep and you've got the insights you believe are so important, go further. Always analyze, what does this mean? One of the things that is helpful that I love to use when meeting new people that want some coaching is humor. Because it's a nerve-wracking thing to do if you're a visual artist, let's say, or a dancer, and you don't use words normally in your practice. So it takes courage to come to someone that you don't know uh, and ask them, what do I mean? And so I love using humor and gentle coaching to help people find their voice. And it makes them leave feeling stronger, which is a wonderful reward.
So what I'm going to do now is show you some images, some photographs, and I'm going to show you the power of words by offering a boring description of the painting or the photograph and a more interesting uh, use of words to describe that same thing. The point is the interesting use of words leaves you wanting more. That's your goal. So for the drawing of me, I'm at seven years old. It's 19, I don't know what. And so here's two caption options to show you boring writing versus interesting writing. Good examples. So boring caption is, I've been making art my whole life. So you're looking at a little girl drawing. That's descriptive, but try this one. I have always used painting to create fantasy identities. Which is more interesting? For the picture of my grandmother, this is from the 30s. The boring caption is, my grandmother taught me to love nature. Or, interesting caption, interesting use of words. My grandmother taught me to take risks by doing things like scrambling through shrubbery for an abandoned hummingbird nest. Which is more interesting? This is all about the use of words to be precise, to be surgical. So the photo of me in art school in the 70s, boring caption is, my drawing was always about my surroundings. Yeah, so, or, my drawing analyzed how colleagues defined their creative territory. So the less boring captions, the use of words is, is intriguing. It makes you want to know more. That's your job when you're writing a grant. So the sentences don't have to be long, in fact they should be short, to have a lot of intrigue. I love seeing artists become true to themselves. There's a lot of pressures on artists, especially in the beginning stages, to do what somebody else thinks is the right thing to do in your studio, but each person is so individual that it's great to see cultivation produce a nice harvest.